Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is going to be another trying to fix it video, a video where I buy something 40 off eBay and I do my best to fix it. Now with all these videos it might not necessarily be the correct way to do it and I'm not always successful. This is real life, sometimes I fix it, sometimes I don't, sometimes I partially fix it. So I've got nothing to prove on this one, I'm not an expert and I don't claim to be an expert. The things you see in this video will probably be the incorrect way of doing things but it might be similar to how you might go about it, fixing things yourself if you're not an expert, just like me. So the idea is that I've got very limited knowledge, but I do my best. I work hard, try my best to fix it. So this one here is going to be a Nintendo Switch. Now, I've already done a couple of Nintendo Switch videos. I'm not going to tell you the outcome of the one just before this, because you might want to watch that, and I don't want to spoil it for you. So from this seller, I actually bought two Nintendo Switches. So I've already done the video on one of them, and this is the second one. So this one here is apparently, uh, apparently it's got a fault with the uh, Joy-Con rails at the side. Both of the Joy-Con rails are apparently completely ripped off, which is kind of weird, because I don't really know how that would happen in day-to-day -day use, unless there was somebody who was suffering an awful lot of rage, and they uh, completely ripped the Joy-Cons from the side of it. But, uh, yeah, quite right there is. Oh, actually, that's good. It does look like it's been ripped, because there's a bit of ribbon cable there, so it doesn't look like they've been used for anything else. Uh, apart from that, the switch looks looks pretty good. Right, okay, so that's a, that's a good start. Now, I'm going to show you what I paid for it. So, anything to do with switch is really, really expensive. Bear in mind, this is a broken one. It doesn't come with the dock. It doesn't come with the charger. It doesn't come with the Joy-Cons or anything. Not even the Joy-Con grip. That is all you get. And there was 21 people bidding on it, and I had to pay £102, which is a silly amount of money. But unfortunately, in the UK, that is what the market dictates. It says, Nintendo Switch console, switch only, missing left and right connections. And we've got a few pictures here. It just shows you it missing on the right and left, and this is exactly the same as the one that I've got. And it says here, you were bidding on a Nintendo Switch console, switch only, missing left and right connections. This item has been listed for parts as the item has no end connectors on both sides, see pictures. The controllers will not fit onto the switch due to missing parts, due to the parts missing for, therefore no sides will connect to the controller. The switch would only power on to the connect controller logo when powered on. No further test has been carried out and the cartridge is untested. Battery life has not been fully tested, however, stayed on for the duration of the power test. All internal parts are unchecked. So basically what they're saying is, when you first will boot up the switch, you have to uh, actually connect the Joy-Cons to it in order to get past that screen. So this all seems completely believable. Now you might be wondering how much the actual end connectors cost. So I've just gone on to replacebase.co.uk, which is a UK company, and you see the right hand one here is £8.70. And the left hand one is also £8.70. So you're looking at, uh, what's that going to be, £17.40 for both of them. So even if this was a perfect switch by the end of it, you still end up paying a lot of money. But in my instance, I've already got the parts because the first switch I did, which is going to be a spoiler for you now, but the first switch I did was bricked. So basically, I've got a load of spare parts from it. And these are the two parts here. This one will go onto that side and this one with the long ribbon cable will go onto the right hand side. So you never know, I might be lucky with this one and it might be just a case of opening it up, putting these two on and then it will work. But remember, this is from eBay, so very often things are not as they seem. So it'd be interesting to see whether it is just as simple as this. It would be nice for a change for it to be as simple as this because if it is, I feel quite confident that I will be able to fix it. Right, okay, so uh, let's get started. So I've got my tray here to uh, keep all my screws in, it's a mag magnetic tray and uh, I wonder should I, I should really turn this on to begin with just to see if there's any battery life or anything on it. All right, so that's a good sign, screen's working. Hopefully that will go out, excellent, so it's not bricked. Fantastic, right, okay, so it's asking for that and obviously you can't go past that, there's no point in me putting the Joy-Cons on there because there is no connector there. Right, okay, so let's turn this off. Let's see if there's any volume. Yeah. Right, I'm going to completely power it down by holding down the power button. 
Okay, didn't come up with the option, but I presume it's powered down. Right, okay, let's uh, undo it and see what's going to happen. So this is my third time taking apart the Nintendo Switch, so I'm starting to get a bit more confident with it. That's the good thing about when things are broken, it's... Uh, Actually, this one up here has been taken apart before. Right, that screw is loose and also feels like it's nearly... Feels like the head's gone on it. Yes, the head has gone on it. Right, let me do the others and then I'll come back to that one. Yeah, so as I was saying, the good thing about it is when things are broken, it forces you to learn. So obviously I'm buying these broken, but when I was young, I had uh, I couldn't afford a decent car, so I, I had uh, my first car was like a very old uh, old mini, and I didn't want it to keep breaking. It just happened to keep breaking. So sometimes the seals would go on the brake cylinder, or the seals would go on the uh, the clutch reservoir. Uh, other things, you know, like uh, uh, the alternator or the the spark plug uh, HT high tension leads I think they're called so different things like that would go faulty also you had to service it yourself because you couldn't afford a garage to do it and when you do things yourself you really do learn when you rely on other people all the time you're not learning so I think it's good to do things yourself and then you have more chance of understanding how things work and I do think you save money in the long term and it's not just that it's the sense of achievement when you actually do something, when you fix something, even if it's not that expensive, it's not just about saving money, it does make you feel good. So uh, I really do recommend anybody to give it a go. You know, you might be surprised, and it's amazing what you can fix when you put your mind to it. Now if you watch my videos, you definitely know that I'm not an expert at things, and an awful lot of things I don't fix. Like right now, I'm struggling to get that screw out. But the others seem normal, so what might have happened is maybe somebody who didn't have the correct tool just tried to do it with a normal uh, a normal screwdriver or something and then uh, you know gave up when they realized they couldn't do it. Just trying to put in a normal flathead just just to see if it can get a grip on it. Well, I'm going to have to get a, another screwdriver set to see if I've got any tiny flatheads to fit in there. Right, OK, I've just got a little bit of extra light as well and some more screwdrivers. So hopefully one of these will fit. See, if I can just get it out, I don't have to worry about putting it back in because I've got a load of spare screws. Here we go, it's coming out now. Right, so now that I've got a grip on it there, all I've got to do is use some uh, some pliers on it to get the rest of it out. Do you ever strip one of your uh, tri-wing heads? What I just used there to get it out was a very, very small flat head. And also this flat head is also slightly damaged as well. You can see it's a bit bent. But obviously it's going to depend on... Uh, on your screws as well, you know, how damaged they are and stuff. In the initial look of this switch, it all looks pretty good, obviously, apart from the fact that the Joy-Cons, uh, the Joy-Con rails have been ripped off. Now, uh, I mentioned this in my other video, but it's confusing to me why the serial number has been taken off the two switches that I've bought from uh, from eBay, from this particular, this particular seller. So, uh, I don't really understand you know why they've uh, why they've been taken off what I was wondering whether Nintendo might not recycle the ones that go back to them when I mean recycle they might not put them back out to the public again maybe they have to be brought to uh, a company to get rid of them environmentally you know to get the get them fully recycled because maybe they don't want to risk oh look this has been open sorry to keep waffling on and then stopping but look screw missing here so this has definitely been attempted to be opened. Now, normally you would have to undo them at the side, but not in this instance. Well, that's good. I can still see the dust here. So that says to me, can you see all the dust here? That says to me that this hasn't been really tampered with because otherwise that dust would have probably fallen out of it. So I've got to undo this uh, shield here and also you can see the dust 
here through this one so you can tell that it's this left side here that gets most use and obviously if this was taken apart and touched just a fingerprint on there would get rid of most of the dust you see so I don't think this has been apart before and if I'm lucky I shouldn't have to do any more dismantling it should be just this coming off and then uh, I should be able to get to them there we go okay right so these are the two connectors here okay so that's already been taken out here before unless it got ripped out it is possible that with the force that that got ripped out this one is still in here so uh, quick visual check everything else looks looks good no water damage I can tell from that little sticker there this little sticker here all looks pretty good so this one you see will come straight out there okay I left a bit of that behind let me pop let's pop the battery out alright so this is the the remains of the ribbon cable and let's pop this one out as well now that's interesting on this one here the little uh, the little flap has been opened so I wonder whether force would cause that to open there we go this one stayed shut hmm okay a little bit unsure about what's happening here whether it's real or not but uh, still we'll, we'll, we'll give it a go put it in this way around you see with the dark bit here the dark bit facing upwards and not the gold pins so the gold pins need to be facing in hopefully now it will go in easy this side's a bit weird because the ribbon cable has to kind of fold in a weird way Maybe I should be doing that first. So from memory it goes in that way and then it folds in on itself. That's it, I'll show you in a second because if I let go of this it's just going to spring up like a coil. Yeah, it's going in nice. Right, so it's it's a real weird setup, but basically, let me just make sure it goes in. That's it there. It goes in there, and then it's like vertical that bit there, so it's flat, and then it kind of loops round into here. So it's a it's a really weird really weird setup not sure why it needed to be so long maybe it's so when it gets taken apart you've got a bit of slack and with this side here it just feeds under the circuit board like so Yeah, that's gone in as well. And put the little flap down. So basically, this flap at the bottom here, this flap here lifts up like that, and this flap lifts up like that. Right, okay, so they are 
back in now so I can pop this battery connection in. Hope, I hope this works. Right, that's in. So now I need to put this uh, shield back on. I'm going to reuse this one here because it all still looks quite fresh. So I'm just going to place this back on here. Now I'm going to do the screws up. Get a tissue and clean this up. So I'm going to put the good screws back in and then the missing one and the uh, one that's crossed, I'm going to swap it over for the uh, screws that I've got out of my Brit Nintendo Switch. Which, and it's these fatter screws that go onto the side. So I'm just going to put in one on each side to begin with just to hold it, and then I can put the others in. I'm hoping now they are going to screw in. They are, and they're gripping. Isn't that weird? I wonder what happens here. Because I would have thought if you snapped the Joy Cons out completely, well, first of all, I would have thought that you would have broken the actual Joy Con itself rather than the rails here. But uh, if these were just yanked out, you would think you would think it would have stripped the threads on them. Okay, so they've all gone in really nice. Oh, I don't believe it. Oh no, such an idiot. I didn't put the SD card reader back in. Oh, I've got to undo it all again. Oh, it's alright for you lot, you can just fast forward there. <laughs> it can just be fast forwarded. Oh no, what an idiot. I can't believe I did that. I'll tell you why that is, it's because I'm getting used to taking these apart now. If that was the first time I would have never done that because you double and triple check everything. a few out there that were shouting at me to uh, <laughs> let me know that I forgot to put in that SD card reader. At least I haven't got to do the metal foil, uh, the metal shield thing on the inside, I've just got to do the cover and these uh, rails. These can be a little bit fiddly, so I'm just going to take off this bit of uh, sticky rubber, or sticky foam. Okay, I was quite lucky that time it went in, went in easy. I should have known that there was a little silver screw left over and then I wouldn't have missed it. Happy that's in. Right, okay, now we can put it back on. Corner screws are all tri wing, and uh, all of the others are just cross head. Funny, so I stopped it, undid it, and uh, now I'm doing it up again because sometimes you can cross thread them. Right, okay, so that feels nice and smooth. That feels nice and smooth. Right, okay, so give it a quick clean, and then I need to uh, get some Joy Cons on it and see whether they're going to work or not. See if this is a genuine fault or whether there's something dodgy going on. Get it working. It is actually in very good condition. Right, here we go, moment of truth gets good. These uh, Joy-Cons from here, from this other switch.
Right, I'll tell you what, let's leave them off. Let's turn it on and we'll go through that same setup again. Right, okay. That's good, it recognised it there. It recognised it there. Excellent. Look at that. Maybe I can turn this light off now. It might be better to see without it. Right, okay, let's see if the touchscreen works. Yes, it does. Sound works as well. Searching for networks, I've just got to do this bit off camera. Next. Excellent, so that's connecting, so Wi Fi is working. Right, let's do it. Let's connect it to the TV now because I've got it set up from my uh, previous video. So uh, let's pop it in and see if it will dock. Lights uh, come on. That's doing it, and it looks like it. Yes, fantastic. It's done it. Right, okay. So let's go to success. Right, set your icon and nickname next. That will do. Test two. Later. Skip. Excellent. Right. Okay. So far, so good. Let's pop a game in, and let's see if it uh, see if it works. Then I've got to do an SD card. I've got to test out the headphones. In fact, I can test out the headphones right now. Yeah, it's come up there. So that's good. Hold that down. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, let me just make sure I can hear it. Yep, yeah, I can hear that, so headphones are fine. Right, okay, let's pop a game in. Excellent. Update. I'll fast forward through this. Console battery 51%. What, uh, I don't know whether that updated the system or the game. Current system version 5.10. Right, okay. The system is up to date. Right, and now the game's uh, updating as well. Right, okay, let me put on a pro controller to it. Working fine. So this should now come up as player two. Okay. Just lower down the volume. Okay, that's working. Let me just turn this smart steering off and put on motion controls just for a second. Yeah, obviously that's going to work because there's a controller that does that. Yeah, that's all working absolutely fine. Just check the volume. Right, okay. Let's uh, let's take it out and test the touch screen. Make sure that that's working fine. This is great. It just seems like a, a, a genuine fault. Nobody's tried to put a fast one or anything. So it's uh, it's good. It's kind of restored my faith in eBay and sellers as well. So, uh, right, okay, that's fantastic. Now let's take it out. Check the brightness. Yep, fine. Try 
controllers and sensors. Test input devices, test touch screen. Just want to make sure that every part of the touch screen works. That's all working absolutely fine. Last thing, well not last thing, but I checked the kickstand and also I need to try an SD card. Right, so kickstand works. Let's just do a bit of a, a distance test, make sure that it works from a bit of a distance. Okay, this room's only small, but I'm about uh, seven foot away from it now. Yeah, that's all good. And SD cards, right. Just check the... Uh... Actually, is it worth checking the analog sticks? Because that's going to be the, the Joy-Cons rather than... Let me just quickly test them. Yeah, that's fine. But then again, that would be the Joy-Con rather than the Switch. Okay. All right, so I've just got to turn it off to put in the SD card. I'm going to hold it down until we get to this menu here. Power options, power off. Then when it's completely off, we're just going to pop the card in. Now I'm not going to actually do anything with this card because this is from my actual switch. But I just want to make sure that it recognises it because normally you have to format it when you put it in. So as long as it recognises it then it's going to be okay. Excellent, there you go. A system update is required to use the micro SDXC memory card. So it's recognising the card so there's no reason why that wouldn't work. Right, okay, so I'm going to turn it off again, so I can take the card out. So there you have it, I'm really pleased with that, that was a, a genuine fault there. So you know what, it's still expensive, but it's it's actually worth it for the actual Switch tablet itself. It's uh, I'm not saying it's cheap, but uh, at that price there, it's good to get it, it's good to get it working. And it's nice to have a fault that doesn't take like five hours to fix, you know, just something straightforward. These were broken off and they just needed to be replaced. There wasn't any other hidden agenda. So uh, I'm really pleased with this one and the condition of it is, in my opinion, very good. I've seen a slight mark up here when I turned the screen off, you'll see it. I think it was, uh, I think it was just a tiny, tiny little mark. Can't even see it now through the camera lens. Okay, there's a tiny little scratch there. But we're talking tiny, you know. These just happen within a, a couple of weeks of having it anyway. So it's in uh, it's in very good condition. If you have a look at the back as well, very good. There's a bit of a scratch here. But apart from that, it all looks perfect. Kickstand and everything works really well. So this is this is a good, honest switch that looks like it wasn't tampered with before. It had the dust and stuff inside. So really happy with this one here. Right, okay, and just to finish off the video, I just wanna show you my Wii U that I had awful problems with because it needed a new motherboard. I got the motherboard from China. It turned out it was region locked to the USA. So now I've got a European one, so I'm just gonna show you that one working now. Okay, so I got the European motherboard for the Wii U that arrived. It was $19.99, so it was roughly around £5 more expensive than the one from China, but this one actually specified it was from Europe, so uh, now, finally, it should work. Oh, that's interesting, it's the darker colour, like the original one that came out of it. It also has these little plastic things already on here, and it says here, OK written on it, so I reckon this is out of a working Sorry, I reckon this was out of a broken Wii U. I don't think this is new like the Chinese ones. I think this is like a refurbished one from a working, uh, from a non-working uh, Wii U. Right, okay, so let me just uh, quickly whiz through and get this installed again.
Right, okay. So, uh, at long last, the Wii U is working. So it was a bit of an epic, purely because I ordered the wrong motherboard. I should have done my research first to find that it was region locked. I just assumed that this one here, the actual console, would be the region locked, and I presumed that the gamepad would be the same worldwide, so I didn't think it would make a difference, especially as the game, the motherboard was being sold in the UK. It's a bit pointless kind of selling a motherboard in a country that it's not suited for. But, you know, buyer beware. It was my own fault for not, uh, not checking it. And, uh, yeah, now... It appears to be working just fine, so that's uh, so that's great news. So a nice end to it. I'm glad that eventually I got it working and I didn't give up on it. So there we go. I had a bit of a success there with the Nintendo Switch, which I think was a right result. I think this was a a, a real good one just to be able to change the ends there. Really happy with that. And now the Wii U is working as well. So if you like these videos, please give them a thumbs up. And if you want more Fix-It videos, please subscribe. And also how-to videos as well. So thanks a lot for watching. Take care. Bye now.